Hello, I'm Crafty Patty. Thanks for stopping by my channel. Today, we are knitting this cute mermaid snuggle sack, and I'm sure my granddaughter's is going to fall in love with it. This fin, look at it. It's just so adorable, don't you think? It's an easy knit, and I have gone pretty slow for beginners, so if you're more advanced knitter, then feel free to just zoom ahead. And for beginner knitters, there are a couple little areas that you may not understand, but you can see how I do it in the video. Now, please note that in the pattern, it says you only need three balls of yarn to complete this project. Well, I actually was short by about two yards or two meters. Oh, maybe somebody took out a couple meters and turned it to the store. I don't know. So I've made some adjustments to a couple measurements in the pattern so you don't run out of yarn. Or if you want to follow the exact pattern exactly, then do go out and buy a fourth ball of yarn so you don't run out. I didn't want to buy another ball because I'm trying to use up my yarn instead of buying too much. So with that being said, let's get started on making this fun mermaid snuggle set. I'll be demonstrating doing the child size today and we're using Yarn Inspirations Burnett Blanket Brights. They don't have to use brights, you can use this as a solid color if you want and not the variegated, but the person I'm doing it for it likes purples and pinks so that's why I chose this one. And this particular one is called Unicorn Brights and as you can see it's a super bulky six and each ball has 220 yards or 201 meters. We will be using US 11 or 8 millimeter circular needles. And please don't worry about knitting in the round. You can do it. I'm going to show you the simplest way to join the round and away we go. I've taken a photograph of this pattern for you and you'll see that coming up. But it probably won't be as clear. And if you want your own printed copy, just go to Your Inspirations and type into their search knit mermaid snuggle sack and it will come up and I also have the link for you in the description box below the video and as always all the supplies are there for you as well. Feel free to look at the pattern as we go along and I will show you step by step as well in the video. Course, some scissors and a tape measure and you'll want a stitch marker either using the pin or the ring. The ring is faster. The Yarn Inspirations Balls of Yarn will usually have a strand coming out from the middle. That is so much easier to pull from the middle so your ball isn't rolling all over the table when you're trying to knit. The first thing I want to do is form your slip knot and I just wrap it around my two fingers, cross over, pop that through. I use my thumb to grab it to pull it up, slip it off the fingers, grab your two ends like this and your loop and you pull it up. You've made a slip knot. And as you can see, this one will just slip up to make a smaller loop. And now let's slip that onto your knitting needle, cinch it up a little bit, not too tight. Let's grab your other end, and I prefer a knitted cast on, but if you have another cast on version, by all means, you can use it. We're just going to slip that in to our stitch on the needle for good tension. I like to wrap around my baby finger, and then I use this finger as a guide. So let's wrap around our needle and then that comes up but don't take it off like you would normally knitting. It just makes a loop on the other needle. Now we're going to come into that needle, that stitch on the right needle, wrap around 
and form your next cast on stitch. You've now got two. I'll do that once more for you. Into that stitch on the right needle, wrap around, bring it off, and up. You now need three. You'll want to cast on 88 stitches if you're doing the child size, and in the pattern you'll see the amount for the adult size. So carry on, and I'll meet you back when I've got my 88 stitches on my needles. This is the count of 87. When you get to 87, this one here becomes your last stitch, so you can just go in to the front and slip it off, and that becomes 88. But do go back and make sure you've got 88 stitches on your needles because of the first section of this blanket will not work if you don't have your 88 stitches on the needle. Place your knitting on the table and make sure that all your cast on stitches are facing the middle. Make sure you don't have a twist like that, otherwise your whole knitting project will be twisted. So let's make sure they're all facing into the middle, like so. Have your yarn coming off on the right side, and this is your first cast on. Now, you might not have all these um, knitted cast ons on the needle. So the easiest way to do that is just to come down to the bottom here, and then just find your wire and then just pull it down so it's not creating any pull or tension on these stitches on the needle. So we're just easing it up so those stitches are now up on the needle. Once you've got them up on the needle, then we're going to join. So right needle into the left stitch on this needle, and again, for the same with our tension, make sure you don't take that first piece. You want the yarn from the ball. Again, good tension. We're going to wrap around and form our first knit stitch that comes off now. Now in this pattern, we're going to be knitting one and purling one. But Before that, we do that, we're going to put a little stitch marker on that first stitch. So let's do that before we forget. There's our stitch marker. That's our first stitch. That was our knit one. Next stitch, we're going to purl. So that means we've got to bring our yarn to the front of our needle. And now we're going to put our needle into the front of the next stitch. And we're going to purl that stitch. And off it comes. You're going to repeat that pattern all the way around until you come to your first stitch. So again, yarn to the back so we can knit. And then yarn forward so we can purl. Continue that pattern all the way around. For beginner knitters, if you're losing track, don't worry, you can figure it out. You'll see where the horizontal line is. You'll know that that is always a purl, and your knit will be coming down like that. So there's your purl, that's your knit, and that's your purl. Coming up to my first stitch here, where my marker is, and my pattern as the first row was, was knit, purl, knit. Now my next stitch has to be a purl. So I'm going to do that purl. And now you'll see on the pattern that it's asking for your first stitch to start as a purl. This is what your seed border will look like. And as you can see, there's a purl, knit, purl, knit, and so forth. In this row beside it, you can see that it alternates. So this is a knit beside the purl, and we've got the purl here and the purl here. 
Now, normally when you do a seam stitch, you'll start with an uneven amount of cast-ons. This particular pattern has 88 stitches. So that's why you're going to see me ending on a purl and starting on a purl on one row, or ending on a knit and starting with the knit. So just wanted to explain that so you know you're not doing anything wrong. So here's our first stitch, one purl. And before I go any further, I'm just going to slip this marker onto that first stitch again. That was the purl for our first stitch, back to a knit. And we're going to go all the way around again in that same pattern. Purl one. And knit one. We'll see when I get back to my first stitch. We did the first round. There's our second round where we had to do the purl again. And I was asking us to repeat those last two rounds twice more. So just to keep track, I make up a little chart for myself. Now you don't have to type it out, but I just did that so it was easier to view for you. You can just hand write it on a piece of paper. There's our first two that we've done. And now I know I have to do row three and four and five and six because we're doing rows one and two two more times. So that's three and four and five and six. So when I go around for the three, I'll check that off. Go around the four, I'll check it off. And then that just helps me keep track of where I'm at. At the end of my second round, there's my first stitch. I've done a purl, knit and a purl back to the back of the needle for my knit stitch. I'm coming in to do my knit on this last stitch here. But on my first stitch, I've got to do another knit so I can do my seed stitch pattern. So this is going to be a knit. And again, let's take that off and put it onto the top. So that was our knit, and now we're going to do our purl. So back to the front, and a purl. And go all the way around with that pattern again. Knit, one, purl, one. And I'll see you when we get back to our first stitch. I've now finished our little seed border, and as you can see, I've checked them off as I did them. And I'm just going to explain something in the pattern for those that are beginner knitters, you might not understand what to do, so I'm going to explain it for you. And as you can see in the pattern, it says knit, increase four stitches evenly around, and then you're wanting to have 92 stitches on the end of that. So you're kind of thinking, well, how do I do that? I'm going to show you the easy way to figure that out. On your computer or your iPhone or whatever you're using, in your search engine, just type in knitting calculator. And I have typed this in before, and I do like the knit grammar. So I'm going to choose this one. And here's your increase evenly calculator. So I'm just going to scroll up for you so you can see this and I will zoom in a bit more for you. And right here is the calculator. So it's asking you to put in the number of stitches and how many stitches you want to increase. Well, we know that right now that we have cast on 88 stitches and I want to increase four stitches. So do the math. And here you go, it's giving you how to increase in the round and how to increase evenly across a row. We're in the round, so it's telling us to knit 22, and M1 means make one, and they repeat that four times. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to knit up to number 21, and then on number 22, 
we're going to increase. So I'll show you how to do that. And as in the pattern, you are now going to do all knit stitches. And as we figured out, I'm going to knit 21 stitches and then we're going to do our increase. So here's our first knit stitch right here. That's our first stitch. And I'm just going to move this up so I don't forget. That was number one. And I'm going to count up to 21. And this is number 21. And now to increase, I'm going to knit in the front and the back of the stitch. So this is actually number 22. This is number 21. So into the number 22 stitch, go in like we would normally knit. Bring your yarn around. Like you're going to take it off, but you're not going to take it off. And now you're going to bring this to the back of the stitch. Wrap around again. And now you can take it off. You have now increased by one stitch. And it's asking you to do that four times. So I'll do that again. I'll count off 21 stitches and I'll show you the increase again. Twenty, twenty-one, and then on our stitch twenty-two, we're going to knit in the front and back. Here we go again. Knit into the front, wrap around, bring that through, bring that needle into the back of the stitch, wrap around, and off. That's your make one increase. And we're going to do that two more times, and then I'll meet you back to our starting point. I'm on my last increase, the fourth time. I've just knit my 21st stitch. Here's number 22, and there you go. There is our first stitch. So it worked out perfectly. Even increase in the round. So here's my last one. In the front, around and into the back. And that completes our first increase row. You should now have 92 stitches in your round. And now we've got some nice easy knitting to do. All knits keep going around and around until it measures from your cast on edge 22 inches or 56 centimeters. If you don't want to use this kind of marker, it's a little bit more cumbersome because you've got to constantly take that off. So let's say if you had the ring instead, the ring would have been right there. So then all you have to do is you just take that ring off and slide it onto your right needle and then you just continue to knit until you get your place marker again. So that's probably a lot faster if you prefer that method. I'll be running out of yarn for my first ball soon, so we need to add the second ball to it. Let's do a really easy join. And we're going to join just with a simple knot. So let's bring this left one over our right. Let's just bring that around. And now let's bring our left over this right and bring that through. And let's just cinch that up and tie that knot. Now we want to pull on this really tight. I don't want to see any slipping of those knots. I'm going to pull on these ends. I'm going to pull on these ends. 
keep pulling. It's got to be tight because if it's not tight, it's going to come out on you. You can see it's still slipping like pull until it's not slipping anymore. Once you've got that really secured, you can come in and you can cut close to that knot on each side. Careful not to cut your long strands, just cut your short strands. Come in and check again and make sure it's not coming apart. Yes, you'll get some little bits and pieces coming off, but as long as that's staying together, you'll be good to go. You can clean that up just a little bit more. There we go, ready to go. When you measure, you don't include your needle, you just go up to your needle and you go down that way to do your measurement. And now we're going to start shaping the body. So on our next round, we're going to knit 21, and then we're going to knit two together, and we're going to repeat that pattern around until we have 88. So knit 21, knit two together, knit another 21, knit two together, and so forth. And then when you're down to your 88 on your one round there, then you're going to knit five rounds even. Then you're going to repeat this pattern. And just to help me out, I've also put that on my little guide here. So I've got my knit 21, two together, five rounds, knit 20, knit two together, five rounds, knit 19, two together, and so forth. And I've just written that all out, and then I can see how many stitches I'm going to have. It decreases four stitches every time. And just keep doing that, like I said, until you've got 44 stitches on your needles. And so here's the last stitch from my knitting the 22 inches. There's my little marker, and we're going to start our decrease now. So again, as we talked about, we are going to knit 21 and knit two together. So I'll just speed this up so you're not totally bored, but I'll just count it out myself. So here's number one and two, and I'll see you when I get to 21. This is number 20 and number 21. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna slip our needle into, not the stitch, but this one, because we're gonna knit two together. So we're coming into this one, and we're grabbing both of these stitches, wrap around, and knitting them both together, like so. And now I'm going to count out 21 more stitches and knit two together, and we'll meet you back at our marker. So it's number 20, here's 21, and here's my two, and there's my marker. So I'm knitting my last two together. Let's move our marker over. And now that we've done our first decrease, we are now going to knit five rows all even, all the way around, five rows. And by the way, you should now have 80 stitches in your round. Well, here we go. This is what we've got so far. I've just done my last decrease row where I now have my 44 stitches on the needle. And to achieve that, I went down to knit 10, and then your knit two together. And then that brought me down to my 44 stitches. And let's cast off by knitting one, knitting a second one, and then taking that first one and slipping it over. And continue that until you're, you've cast off all of your stitches. And you can pull down if you're a beginner knitter and you're worried that you're going to lose a stitch, I'm just pulling down on this stitch here so I don't lose it. 
and then that one can slide over quite easily. And then I'll just take my needle off, just lift this up so I don't lose that last stitch. And I'm going to leave a few feet here just so I have enough to sew up the bottom of the bag. And once I've cut that off, I can just slip that through to tie that off. And now we're ready to do our tail. The instructions say to sew this up, but I'm going to wait until I do my tail. And as the pattern says, we're going to cast on 42 stitches and then we're going to knit three rows, which is garter stitch all knit rows. And with my handy little guide, I've got my three rows, so I'll just check those off when I'm done. And so here we go, starting with our slip knot again. Just in case you've forgotten how to do a slip knot, I grab it with my thumb, pull down on both tails, and there you have a slip knot again. I'm going to do my knitted cast on. If you don't like a knitted cast on, then by all means, choose the cast on that you prefer but I'll show you what the cast on is again in case you've forgotten. So I'll slip that into that first stitch on the needle and let's create one more knit stitch by wrapping around. And then when you bring it up, you're gonna leave it on the needle and then you come in with this needle into that stitch you've created on the right needle, wrap around and you've now made two stitches. I'll do once more, just in case you've forgotten. All right, so I'm going to carry on and I'm going to do 42 cast on stitches. And now we're just knitting three rows and we're not knitting in the round, we are knitting side to side. So when we get to the end of this, we're not joining. We're just using our needles because we have them. And then I will show you when I get to the end of this row. And here's my last two stitches for my first row of knitting. There we have our two needles. I'm just going to transfer this needle to my left hand and this needle to my right hand. And now we're going to knit our second row. And do the same for your third row. And we'll see you when we've got that third row finished. And now we're going to make these fun little scalped edges of the tail fin. And as always, I like to write it out so it's easy for me to follow. And we're going to be casting off three stitches. We're going to knit to the last four. We're going to leave those on the needle. We're going to turn. We're not going to knit those four stitches. And then we're going to knit three rows. And we're going to continue that pattern starting from the top and working down again. And keep repeating that pattern until you have 15 stitches remaining on your needle. And first thing we're doing is we're casting off three stitches. So we knit one, knit the next one, and this is our first cast off. There's one. Let's knit another one, cast off two, and knit another one, and there's our cast off three. And now we're going to knit to the last four stitches. So I will knit and I'll see you when I get to the last four. I've left four stitches on my left needle and now I'm just going to turn this over. And now that we've turned our work, you'll see our four stitches remaining on this needle, we'll leave those alone. And we're gonna start knitting on the stitch, knit to the end of the row, and we're gonna knit two more additional rows. So let's do that. 
here's our needle we're using on the right, but we're starting knitting right here. I know it feels a little weird, but it'll make a really cute thin. And I'll knit to the end of the row and we'll see you there. And here's my last two stitches on this row. And again, let's move our left needle. Sorry, move our right needle to our left and this becomes our right. And now we're going to knit one more row. And we're knitting all stitches, including those four that we left behind. And we're just going to knit all the way to the end of the row. As we would normally. And then once you've got to the end, turning again. And let's knit our last row. Here's our last two stitches and you'll see from that first cast off, that's the first little scallop that we've done on our fin. So again, let's turn this over. And starting with our cast off of three stitches just like before. And there you'll see the little ridge. That's what's creating a little scalloped edge. Cute, huh? All right. So you've got the pattern, you know what to do, and just keep going. For my last decrease row of casting off three stitches, I've finished off that one sequence of my last knit row until I had 15 stitches remaining. And this is what we have, one side of the fin. And now what we're going to do is come up the other way and we're now going to increase. And we're going to start our row by casting on three stitches. So now we're casting on and we're following the exact same sequence until we're back to our 42 stitches. So let's start by casting on three stitches. Remembering that we need to knit one and then we're bringing it over. So that would be one stitch cast on. Let's do that again. That would be two stitches. And we need to do one more. And slip that one on. We've now cast on three stitches. So now we're going to knit our three cast on but we're going to continue knitting and I'll meet you at the end on my last knit. Here's my last knit stitch and like before we're leaving the four on, turning and knitting back. And I'm going to knit all the way to the end. Here's my last stitch. And turning. And knitting back. And here's our last knit row. To knit to the end. So we can cast on again. 
I meet you at the end. Here's my last two dents. And then we're turning our work. And this is where we're going to now cast on three stitches. So again, we're going to knit one and bring that onto the needle. Knit another one and bring it onto the left needle. And last one, knit one and bring it on to the needle. We've now added three stitches and again, repeat the process now like we'll do for all the other rows to get our little scallop edge and keep going until we've got the 44 stitches on the needle again. Here's the almost finished tail fin and I've gotten to my last stitch over here and I'm panicking, was panicking all the way along on those last few rows because this is all the yarn I've got left. So I don't want that to happen to you because if I don't have enough yarn to cast off, I'm going to have to rip up my body and take some yarn out of there. So to prevent that from happening for you, so I would suggest you probably knit only 43 inches and then I hope that you will be fine. I'm also going to discuss this in the earlier part of the video and in the description part of the video so nobody else comes across this and you run out of yarn. So here's my first one, knitting one, and then knitting two, and then you're bringing your last one over and casting off. And you'll continue that to the end. And go all the way along, casting off. I'm just going to fold it in half with the yarn coming off this side, then I can just sew all the way across. Get yourself a nice large eyed darning needle. I like the blunt end ones folding it over the needle, pulling down tight, and then you should be able to squish it back up through the eye of the needle. And let's sew the body of the mermaid up. And the way I'm sewing this up is I'm going through this front part of the stitch, or depending on which way you're looking at it, front or back, and then I'm going to go into the back on the one on the opposite side. So not this one, but this one. And we'll pull that through. And then let's find the next stitch on the back. Be right here. And the next stitch on this side. We've gone through that one, so it's going to be this one. And work your way back and forth until you've sewn all the way along. Once you get to your last stitch, bring it back through that loop to tie it off. And come through one more time. and through the loop again. And then I come back again. Then I'm just going to pop it in here and just reach it up through anywhere. It doesn't matter where. 
this little tip is in the inside of the sack and cut it off. Now find the middle of your body and the middle of your tail and then just attach it there. Then you know that you've got to kind of work in any bulk and by squishing it in if you need to and the same for this side. It ends up being just slightly bigger. So we can just, we'll just have to squish it in just a little bit. So let's start over here. The yarn is attached to the tail. And then I'm going to come into my last edge stitch here, into that one, and into this blue one if I can as well. There we go. And we kind of want the tail to sit like that, right? So maybe you might want to put it up on a table. It might look better for you. And then we can make sure that it's all going on nicely. So there's that one. Let's come into our next stitch and then come into our tail. This is you kind of want them sitting so it's attached flat, not overlapping. Here you might want to take two stitches into one of the body just to work up some of the excess bulk if you need to. Looking not too bad. All right, so I think you got the idea of going back and forth, keeping it flat, and sew on the rest of your tail. And weave and sew in your last two ends, and then you're all done. Well, even though I wasn't too happy when I ran out of yarn, and I had to rip out part of the body, take out some of that yarn, so I had enough to finish the tail and sew it all together. Yeah, say la vie. It all worked out in the end, and I'm happy with the final results. This mermaid snuggle sack is just so soft and cuddly. I just might try to get in there and try it out. I don't know. Or I could get the adult version for me, too. And look what I found. Some mermaid fabric at my fabric store, and it was 70% off. So... I needed something to wrap the gift in, so this is perfect. I made up a really basic, easy drawstring bag that my snuggle sack will fit into. And then she can also use the bag later, or she can use this to store her mermaid cuddle sack. Cinch up the drawstring. Tie a little bow. And it's all ready to send and give to her as a beautiful gift. I am so happy that I found this mermaid fabric. It's just perfect. <laughs> well, <laughs> what do you think? Do I make a good mermaid? I actually fit in here. So this is very warm and cozy, and I'm having fun with it. So let's just have fun with my little fin here. Whee! <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyways, <laughs> till then, bye bye.